Welcome everybody. I know some of you out there get a little frustrated by how long it can take to paint a portrait and today I'm going to talk about how you can paint a very satisfying portrait by keeping things simple, keeping things minimal, and just focusing on the eyes, nose, mouth, and just a little bit of the surrounding area. When I got started with this painting a while back, I was definitely a little burned out from doing some larger works. The kind that takes sometimes 8, 10, 20 hours. So I thought, you know what, let's go back to some basics. Let's do something that's just quick and easy and more fun just knowing that it's not going to take forever. And knowing those things up front, I think, can really take a lot of the stress away from painting, knowing that you're going to have a finished painting in a fairly short amount of time. So as you can see with this painting, I have a pretty much a straight forward looking portrait, which is another way to speed up the process when the subject isn't looking in an awkward direction. When the subject is looking straight ahead, that makes everything much more symmetrical and can save you a lot of time if you're really wanting to just do a quick portrait and not have to think about angles as much and things like that. The eyebrow line is straight across everything is very squared up. So with all those parameters all set up before I even get started, knowing I've done everything I can to make a very quick, fun portrait, I get started right into the darkest areas of the eyes. I know that's gonna be sort of my anchor point for this painting is those dark, shadowy areas. Without worrying about anything else, those shapes of shadows should be done first in the style of painting I'm doing because when you have this specific area scaled properly and located properly, it's so much easier to build from that like it's an anchor point. So once you start adding the nose and mouth, you have the scale figured out and you know the relationships, the angles, the lowest part of the nose is gonna be easier to find because you have those shadows going around the eyes that will tell you where that bottom portion of the nose is. You can see that the lower edge of those darker portions of the eye shadows is not that much higher than the very bottom shadow edge of the nose. It's these kinds of relationships that will help you move confidently into building the portrait. So it's always good to think of what's the most obvious shape that I see within the features of the face and every portrait will be a little bit different. It all depends on how the shadows are laying on the subject. So if the lighting wasn't as obvious in this painting, if it was a more ambient lighting where there wasn't any direct shadows happening, this could have become a much more complicated painting because the shadows would have been more subtle. There wouldn't have been that dramatic drop off into the darker areas around the wells of the eyes and I would have created a much more time-consuming painting, which is definitely not what I was going for with this painting exercise. Now, all this is gonna be something that you might wanna consider before you even do the painting. You might wanna be considering this when you're taking the photos of your subject or setting up the subject in the corner of your room. You might want to make sure that your lighting is set up in a way that it creates these obvious shadows because if you have a lot of light coming from all kinds of different directions, all of a sudden you've added a lot more complexity to where the shadow shifts are gonna happen within the face. So when you're setting up your lighting, you might want to consider just having a two light setup. And by that, I mean you have one light that is up above like this painting, the light is the direct light hitting the upper part of the forehead, the cheeks, and then there's some ambient light just a little bit, say coming through your window. If you don't have a second light, you could use a window, close it almost all the way so that that secondary light fills your room very subtly. That's another great way to do it if you don't have a lot of lights. And just remember that the larger the light source, say if it's window light, the softer the lighting is going to be on the face. So if you plan on just using the window to directly expose the subject to light, that's going to create a very soft shadow. And that may be a little bit more difficult, especially if you're newer to portrait painting, to create those subtle, soft shadow shifts. 
But the other way to look at it is if you use a light bulb all by itself and it's just exposed directly on the face, you're gonna have a very sharp shadow, which may feel a little bit unnatural, but feel free to give it a try. Try both extremes from soft shadows from a window to really hard edge shadows from a point light, like a light bulb. For this portrait, I would say my lighting is somewhere in between. It's not super sharp, it's not super soft. And what I would recommend is just try a lot of different lighting setups and see which one speaks to you the most. You definitely want to try to become a bit of a lighting expert when it comes to portrait painting because the shadows, the lighting can tell a story just as much as the face itself. Another aspect of this painting that I think really helps to save time is, like I usually do, I create a palette of paints that will be set up before I do any painting. When I started this painting, I already had my palette set up. I had the darks figured out, I had the midtones, I had the color shifts, all of those things were completely figured out before I did my first brush stroke. That way, all I had to do was consider this a drawing exercise. And one final thing that I did to speed up the drawing process was to leave some details out. The mouth area I decided didn't need to be completely finished. I liked those unpainted areas around right where the lips would be. And I didn't put a ton of detail in the eyes either. You get that sense that the eyes are looking to the right, but I didn't obsess about everything being perfect. And I think that's part of the fun being an impressionist painter is you're just trying to create the impression of the subject. You're not worrying about every single detail. Now at this stage of the painting, I'm really just starting to get those final details figured out, those final brush strokes to have everything come together. I'm thinking about the composition. I'm thinking about how can I get those intense blues around the edges to really pop and become sort of that accent color for the entire portrait. Now I believe this painting took about two hours because I do like to take my time to some degree so that every brush stroke really counts. I think that even though this is a very minimal painting, there is just this floating face in the middle of a lot of blank panel space. That doesn't mean that it can't have a impact of equal value compared to a painting that took 20 hours. So try it for yourself. Try something simple and see how you like it. I thought this painting was actually fairly successful. I'm very happy with it. It already sold, so it's unavailable at the time, but I'm sure in the future I'll do some other similar minimal paintings like this one. Thank you again for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, and I will talk to you again next week.